Hi guys, Action 007 Cinema here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap one of the best crime drama movies released in 2007 called Flawless. This movie tells the true story of an elderly janitor who convinces a career stagnant executive to help him steal a handful of diamonds from their employer. How does that happen? What are they going to do next? Let's find out together. The story begins when it shows a journalist meeting an older woman named Laura Queen. She is being interviewed for a series about the first generation of women entering the workforce. She's the only woman who's ever been a senior manager at a diamond company called London Diamond Corporation. Suddenly Laura puts a big diamond on the table and she says that she stole it. The story goes back to the 1960s when Laura Queen was still working in London. She is having a meeting with the chairman of London Diamond called Mr. Milton and the other staff to discuss the riots at one of their mines. She argues that the company has to dock with the group that takes over the area to get a mining permit in the area. At the end of the meeting, Mr. Milton suddenly announces a new managing director, but unfortunately, it is not Laura who is elected and she looks disappointed. At her desk, she always writes letters with some motivation for herself. She is a woman who works so hard for the company that she forgets about her social life that she should enjoy. One night, Laura has a small conversation with the janitor who is cleaning her room, this old man named Hobbs. He praises Laura's dedication. The following day, Laura accidentally meets her college friend who happens to be a partner with London Diamond. This man is very impressed with Laura and offers her a position at the bank where he works. After Laura arrives at her room, she opens a motivational letter that she wrote for herself and unexpectedly someone has entered a cinema ticket and wrote something that makes Laura so curious. Then, Laura goes to the cinema and it turns out that the man is Hobbs. She is so surprised that she thinks Hobbs wants to date her. But he immediately denies it and says that he has a small proposal for Laura. He says that the notes Laura made are more like frustrating notes rather than motivational notes. Even more surprising, he says that her company is planning to fire her. She is surprised. To prove Hobbs' words, she searches the file on Mr. Milton's secretary's desk and she finds the dismissal file on her behalf. Laura is so frustrated. After that, she goes to his college friend who has offered her to work with him before and asks him what he has said. But because of the closeness of the company, the offer is closed to Laura and he says that she cannot work for all companies that do business with her company. She is feeling so down after knowing that her hard work during this time would be responded with a letter of dismissal. She is also so worried that the career which she has been building will end. Laura then meets Hobbs at an animal race. She secretly investigates his background and thinks that he wants to find something from the company. Hobbs says that in six months he will retire. Then he invites Laura to his house and explains in detail the plan he wants to do. He wants to get into the largest diamond vault on Earth and is planning to steal the diamond there, but he needs a code to open the vault. He asks Laura to get the vault code from her chairman house during this weekend party. He also says that he only wants to take one small grip of diamonds. Laura says that the company wouldn't realize the loss of diamonds by that amount, but Laura declines the offer. The weekend arrives, all of London Diamonds business associates come to the party. There is also the owner of the insurance company that guarantees the London Diamond, named Mr. Clifton. Meanwhile, Laura secretly comes to Mr. Milton's workspace. She searches for the vault code in the room, but she does not find it. Suddenly, Mr. Milton walks into the room. Luckily, Laura goes into hiding. Mr. Milton takes something in a small vault behind a bookcase. After Mr. Milton leaves, Laura opens the little vault, and it is true that the coat she is looking for is there. She then hands the coat to Hobbs, but warns him to be careful. Another problem arises when Laura finds out that CCTV has fitted the entire London Diamond Room. She warns Hobbs to cancel his plans, but he convinces her to do it anyway. Laura plans to call the guards to buy time so Hobbs could enter the room safely. She explains in detail how the CCTV works to him. Long story short, that night comes. Hobbs carries a small flask that he would fill with diamonds, while Laura and the others return home. As usual, Hobbs cleans every room in London Diamond, and without the guard realizing it, 
He calculates the lag time he sees in the CCTV monitor room. Meanwhile, Laura looks so agitated at home. Hobbs is waiting for the right time to get into the diamond vault, and with all his might, he runs into the room. On the other hand, Laura intends to buy time by calling the guard there. The problem occurs when the phone cannot be used. As much as she can, she runs for another payphone. Luckily, the guards are preoccupied with his little food. And finally, Hobbs makes it into the diamond vault. He is so happy to see so many diamonds there and fills the flask he has been carrying. Then he rushes out of the room. The next morning, Laura sees Hobbs coming home with his flask. Hobbs is being called by one of the guards on duty. She thinks that his actions have been known, but it turns out that the guard has only asked Hobbs to fix the clogged drains. Laura is shocked when someone shouts for her. She is taken to the diamond vault and sees that all the diamonds in the room have vanished. On that incident, the officials of London Diamond held a meeting. The insurance guarantor is also there. They agree to conduct an internal investigation and avoid publicity to keep their business trust. To that end, the insurance guarantor appoints their head of investigation to solve the case. The head of investigation calls everyone who worked that night. The next day, Mr. Milton gets a letter explaining that the chief would redeem all his diamonds for 100 million quid in 48 hours. Laura volunteers to assist in the investigation. While Mr. Milton is talking about damage from the insurance company, tensions ensue when the head of investigation explains that the possibility of the robbery was an insider from London Diamond, then concludes that Mr. Milton's son was very likely to do so. On the other hand, Laura is meeting Hobbs. She is terrified and asks Hobbs to return all the diamonds he has stolen. With a small smile on his face, Hobbs declines the offer. In her room, Laura is asked for fingerprints by the head of the investigation. Then the head of investigation takes Laura to interrogate Mr. Hobbs once again. When the head of the investigation leaves, Laura warns Hobbs that the insurance guarantor would not pay for insurance for the London Diamond. According to Laura, Hobbs will not succeed and will spend the rest of his life in prison. Hobbs says that one day, what he has done might inspire Laura that there's an incredible world out there. On the other hand, the head of investigation finds a photo of Laura with Hobbs at an animal race. He also finds fingerprints similar to Laura's in Mr. Milton's room. Mr. Clifton, the insurance guarantor, secretly contacts the media crew to divulge the incident. Meanwhile, Mr. Milton is so angry and wants to have a meeting with the insurance company. He wants the insurance guarantor to pay all their losses. Unexpectedly, dozens of journalists who have been contacted enter the London Diamond that left Mr. Milton having a heart attack and unfortunately, he breathes his last. On the other hand, the head of investigation invites Laura to a bar. He urges her to admit all her deeds. Laura is surprised when she gets a photo of her and Hobbs at the animal race, and she denies everything she is accused of. After he leaves, Laura rushes to the toilet bar and can't believe everything she has done. In the midst of her regrets, she accidentally drops her diamond into the sink. She opens the sink pipe and realizes that all the diamonds stolen are drawn through the drain. Laura then rushes to the London diamond and goes straight into the drain near there. Sure enough, there she finds Hobbs with a stack of diamonds. Laura says she would tell everyone what she has found. With a gun, Hobbs prevents it because the ransom deadline is only an hour away. Laura does not stay silent. She hits Hobbs' hand until it is knocked down. She runs with all her might, but she falls over and is caught again. Here, she finds a piece of diamond and hides it in her skirt pocket. To buy time, Hobbs tells her about how his wife died. It is known that when his wife was sick, they were always rejected by the hospital because they couldn't pay it. The insurance company, led by Mr. Clifton for London Diamond, continued to delay payment of insurance for various reasons for years until his wife died. He says that the target at this time is not diamonds, money, or London Diamond, but for Mr. Clifton's company. On the other hand, Mr. Milton's son already knew that Mr. Clifton had contacted the media. One of his insurance company, Top Brass, also decides to pay for the London Diamond claim. Mr. Clifton does not accept that because at the same time, he also has to pay a ransom worth 100 million pounds. The scene returns to Laura and Hobbs. He recounts every detail of his actions. He drained and put all the diamonds in the drains. 
He also hired an intermediary to demand the ransom he wants. Laura challenges him to shoot her, and it turns out that the gun in Hobbs' hand is never loaded with bullets. Since the ransom time is up, he leaves Laura with a pile of diamonds. She reports her findings to the head of investigation and the others, but she keeps one diamond. After the incident, Mr. Milton's son led the company in place of his father. After the investigation is completed, Hobbs is declared to act alone, but they never find him. It turns out that all the ransom that Hobbs has asked is to be deposited in a bank in Switzerland in the name of Laura Queen. By then, Laura resigned from the London Diamond. She also donated all the money for 40 years by leaving an article for the journalist. Laura left, and the film is finished. Money is meaningless without sharing, which is reflected in Laura and Mr. Hobbs' cases. They could have lived a luxurious life with their money, but they decided to share all the money with people who needed it more. As a proverb says, sharing is caring. What would you do if you were in their position? Let us know what you think in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.